What's going on everybody? We're back again for another engineering download on the Spike Flow Brew Pump. I got Adam here. Hey guys. Who heads up our engineering team. He's gonna help walk through the pros and cons of uh, all the competitors' pumps, talk about the pros of our pump, some uh, different reasons on why we went different directions with design, talk about price, all the good information you're looking for. Stay tuned. All right, now we're gonna run through the range of different brew pumps out on the market, kind of from lowest cost to highest cost. Uh, we'll start with the uh, kind of the no name brand, white label, um, low output pump that you know a lot of people start out with. It's like, uh, starts at like 80 yeah, bucks or so. At, yep, and then moving on to the uh, uh, kind of the mid range, um, kind of the tried and true March chugger brand brew pumps that you know have been around for decades. Those come in around you know 180 to 200 dollars. Uh, really well known in the industry. Uh, next up, we've got kind of the big brother to the the smaller pump. It's kind of just a larger output version of the uh, kind of the, the no name brand. Um, it's like white 200, label pump. I think. Yep, 200 dollars or so. Um, after that, we've slotted the the Spike Flow uh, in around you know 220 or so, depending on size. Uh, or, or type between the NPT yep. and, and the TC, yeah. and then kind of final rounding out that um, kind of the, the the offerings. There's the Riptide, which uh, kind of over the past few years has established itself as kind of the lead dog, um, really good pump, uh, coming in around 225 and up, depending on style. Okay, first up, we got the well, we got two pumps. Mm -hmm. We have yep. the uh, the cheapo option, and then kind of the big brother to the the cheapo option. So let's talk about this one first. Uh, let's talk about the pros. Um, first, we have what I like the best is it has half inch NPT fittings, mm -hmm. standard fittings. It's gonna connect to pretty much anything in your brewery. Uh, it also, uh, it's the cheapest, which we talked about, which I think is a pro. It's Probably 80 the bucks. Biggest, yeah, biggest advantage there. Yep. It's half the price of everything. If you just need to move liquid from one place to the next, yep. the cheapest way possible, this is gonna be your option. Uh, another nice thing, it has uh, inline flow um, as opposed to you know side to side, which is just the most efficient way. So it's, you know, you're gonna get the most out of your motor. And then it also has uh, the thrust, built-in thrust washer. We'll talk about that a little bit later in the video, but pretty much it doesn't have a loose washer. When you take it apart, that's gonna roll down your floor drain or off your workbench and not be able to find it and kind of render your pump useless. Yep. Um, as far as the cons, so, uh, it doesn't have a TC option, which kind of sucks. Uh, you know, we sell most of our systems RTC. We know a lot of people like using the TC fittings. Uh, it doesn't have uh, any air bleed, so bleeding air out of your pump is it's just going to be kind of a pain in the ass. You're going to have to jerry rig something together to bleed your air out. Um, it also doesn't have you know a quick way to remove the head. So you got six screws. You're going to need a drill or a screwdriver, and every single time you're going to have to pull it off. You'll see a couple other pumps that we're going to be talking about have a quick way to take it off. Uh, did I miss anything? Anything that, any cons? Yeah, I think that pretty much covers it. You know, the big thing is it's just really low output and just really kind of a starter pump. Okay. Yeah. Let's talk about that guy. Yeah, next we've got kind of the bigger version of it. Um, you know, this is a lot of the same design elements as, as the small one. It's just a lot more output. Uh, this is actually one of the highest output uh, ones on the market. Obviously, you're going to pay a little bit more for that. Um, so, you know, it's definitely a, a big advantage. You can, you know, the rated flow and pressure is, is you know, a good like 30% more than anything else you'll find. Um, Has the inlet, center inlet, yep. similar to this one. Yes, yeah, so this is kind of a bigger version. So it's, it's got, uh, you know, kind of a good flow path. Um, also has that integrated washer that you were talking about. So yep. that's always an advantage. Um, kind of on the flip side of things, you know, with that larger flow rate, uh, you know, comes some issues, right? So they have a lot bigger threading. Um, so they they have a three quarter inch thread, which really is not standard. Uh, we had a weld on, yeah. you know, tri clamp fittings just to be able to hook it up to our test rig because three quarter inch just isn't standard yeah. at all. Yeah, and it, and it was kind of um, a little bit misleading because we kind of found that once you put adapters and just regular size, um, you know, brewing hose onto this. It kind of restricts it down anyways and you just lose some of that flow you never really get the numbers that they claim you're going to get because most normal setups just don't have huge yeah. huge hoses to, to kind of transfer from from kettle to kettle yeah so. so you know similar to this one it doesn't have any air bleed system yep uh, it does have the wing nuts which you know is a little bit easier than 
you know, having a, a Phillips head, but there's no way to quick take it off. Um, again, like we'll talk about, there's a couple other pumps that have the, you know, the quick disconnect option. Yeah, and you know, obviously with the larger pump comes a lot more noise. This is the loudest uh, pump we've tested. So it's just gonna be um, a lot more background noise during your brew day. And then finally, this thing is kind of a beast. It's just like a big mama jama. So if you're gonna mount this on a table or off a bracket, that bracket's gotta be super strong. It, you know, it's gonna have to have a lot more material to it. So that could yeah. definitely present some issues. So. Next up, we have the March and the Chugger. Two Let's, very two very similar pumps. Very yep. similar. Let's talk about the pros. Um, since they're similar, I think we can kind of group them together. Mm -hmm. um, so first up, talk about the March. This is actually the pump that we have used in our systems for five years. Yep. It's a solid pump. The Chugger, it's very similar to the March. They're pretty much based off of each other. Mm -hmm. uh, so good pump. This one's a little bit quieter than, than the Chugger, uh, which is nice. Uh, they both have a center inlet, which we talked about with yep. the other pumps. It's just more efficient uh, than, than a, a side to side. Um, we missing anything else cost wise? Yeah, I mean, the Chugger is kind of a knockoff of the March. So, um, you know, their main play is, is cost. So you're gonna find this one coming in a little bit cheaper. But of course, you know, it's a little bit louder. Um, you know, they're both kind of middle of the road pricing. Yep. They're not the cheapest, they're not the most expensive. Right. Uh, Chugger has kind of a weird um, size inlet. Again, you gotta come up with adapters. Just not, not a normal, um, kind of normal fittings that a brewer would normally have at yeah. home. Uh, uh, this one we actually, so we custom machine these NPT fittings off and we weld on uh, TC yep. fittings. So this one does not come in TC. Right. This one you can get in a TC option, so that's nice. Uh, both of these don't have the uh, built-in thrust washer, so the thrust washer is, is loose. Again, you can yep. potentially lose it. Just pain in the ass if you can't use your pump because you lost the you know, 50 cent washer. Yeah, and again, both of these, neither of them will, will self-prime, so you gotta put priming systems on them. Some sort of Usually bleed valve, valve or valve something. And, valves and T-fittings. Um, you kind of kind of build that up into your into your system. Yeah. Yeah. Another thing that would you know kind of be considered a con would be the flow rate and the pressure. Both of these are they're going to be a little bit more than the cheapo pump that we talked about, but they're going to be less a lot less than than the max pump. Yeah. Uh, and really, really middle of the road. Brew middle of the road of of the brew pumps, less than the spike flow, um, less than the the riptide as well, yep. uh, for both the flow rate and for the pressure created. Yep. So another interesting thing about these is that they all kind of screw onto, onto the head. So you can see this one's got four screws, that one's got eight screws. So anytime you gotta do any work on it, you just gotta get a screwdriver out and it's just kind of a pain. Yeah, it doesn't have the quick disconnect head uh, yeah. like the spike flow or the riptide, yeah. which will show it's a really That's nice feature. Right. Uh, the other thing too, the, the first motors we talked about and, and the other ones we'll talk about are uh, totally enclosed motors. So these have you know air vents, mm -hmm. uh, which you know it's you're, you're brewing. It's wet. You yep. accidentally spray it down. Even if you're not intentionally trying to get your pump wet, it's just a wet environment. Yep. You do not want to get water in here. It can ruin your pump yep. pretty quickly. And we've seen them. I mean, that's why we mount the pumps kind of up and out of the way on our systems. But if if something happens and you get water in it, it can kill your pump. Yeah, it's definitely something you got to be aware of. We see a lot of home brewers will like put their pump in a kind of a tray, and then that it just ends up filling up with water, and that's just not something these pumps can handle. Yeah. Next, we've got the kind of what we call the industry standard uh, Riptide pump. Uh, this pump has been out for a number of years, really well regarded. I'd say it's pretty much the most popular pump out there today. It's overtaken Chugger and March that yep. have been out for like you said decades. Yeah. So. I mean, you know, they packed a lot of good features into this pump. You can see, so we have both uh, a TC and an MPT version, so they kind of give you that flexibility, easy to order what you need. Um, you know, they integrated a throttle valve, they integrated an air bleed, um, you know, had that, that kind of easy open tri-clamp uh, joint. Um, you know, it's uh, the motor's, you know, quiet, it's enclosed, so it's a little bit more tolerant of kind of the yeah. you know, spray and water that you might have in, uh, you know, on your brew day. So, you know, they, they definitely incorporate a lot of good stuff. Yeah. Yeah, so you know those are the pros. It, it's a great pump. Mm -hmm. um, it's definitely a, a, a worthy competitor for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. Um, you know, couple of the cons. Uh, it doesn't have the inline uh, flow or the center inlet flow right. like some of the other pumps. 
Um, hurts performance a little bit. Yeah. Um, you know, the throttle valve is nice that it's built in. Uh, we did mention that in the pros, but it's also kind of a con. It it's it's kind of an impediment to the flow. Yeah. Um, so it from our testing, it actually really hurts the performance of the pump having it built in. Uh, we went a different way. We'll talk about that when we talk about the spike flow. But you can just add a valve either to your pump or really just add it. There's already going to be a valve on your kettle or whatever you're flowing into just to adjust yeah. it there. Yeah, I mean, if you think about it, you've got to take like three or four uh, right angle turns inside here for the flow to get from in and out. And just it, it just reduces your performance. Yeah. Another thing that we did mention on the, the Pro is that it has this you know nice bleed valve, which is great. Helps make bleeding uh, pretty easy. Yep. Uh, what we didn't like is that there's no way to kind of capture the liquid that comes out. It just comes all over your pump and it's hot, sticky work. Not yeah. easy to clean. Uh, when it cools, it like you just have syrup all over your pump head. And it's also on the pressure side. So if you were to open this up, it's just gonna spray accident or purpose yeah. it's yeah you're gonna get sprayed and it, you know if it's hot it's it's not potentially it's not dangerous fun. yeah it's really frustrating i mean it's a it's an effective feature but it's just really inconvenient to use and it's just you're just gonna get more everywhere yeah uh, another thing too flow rate and pressure that's obviously really important when you're moving wart or doing cip these are kind of middle of the road they're definitely more than the cheapo 80 dollar pump they're less than the spike flow or the, uh, the Mark II 65 watt, the, the big yep. mama jama, as you uh, so eloquently put it. One last thing, it's kind of really easy to take apart, which is a, a big pro, but when you take this thing apart, this has got that loose washer. So we've actually lost those washers, actually ran them and didn't even realize that the washer was missing. So then you've got a whole bunch of looseness and then the pump starts to grind itself up. And you know, that's a 50 cent part that ruins, you know, a $200, $250 pump. Yeah. Yeah, I think that pretty much covers the pros and cons. Overall, it, it's been a good pump and uh, like I said, a, a worthy competitor and definitely put, you know, you guys said to put your full brain power into yeah. building a, a better pump than this, but I think we did and hopefully you guys agree with us. So that brings us up to the spike flow. Yep. The first thing I think we should talk about is, you know, why did we make a brew pump? You know, we've been selling our systems with the March pump for five years now. It's been a solid pump. We see really low warranty issues on it, but you know there are some some cons and some room for improvement. We wanted to, you know, come up with a pump. If we're going to be selling a system, a solo, a trio, a nano with our name on it, we we wanted to have a product that we developed from the ground up with all the features. You know, be able to control the quality, uh, control the supply chain, make sure that we can keep it in stock, and that's kind of that's the main reason why we came out with you know Spike Brew Pump. Uh, and you know, Adam and team were tasked to, you know, make a pump that's the most powerful, the quietest. You know, has all these features that we think that you know the brewing industry needs and wants. It's kind of a combination of all the different features of some of the other pumps that we've already talked about into one package that performs really well. Price point, I think, you know, pretty good bang for your buck and value. And you know, I'm, I'm super impressed with what you guys came up with and. We'll talk about the different pros and cons. Yeah, yeah, I think this is kind of a case of taking on that challenge and we knew we could learn from what we've seen and do it better and, you know, kind of provide everything that the brewer needs for their brew day and, you know, this was a, a hole we knew we needed to fill. Yeah. So first, with the spike flow, we're going to talk about cons. Honestly, for us, I think really the only main con is it, it is on the higher end of the spectrum of price, right? You know, so... So NBT is, I think, 219. Yep. Uh, that's twenty dollars more. Yep. So, you know, obviously it's going to be on the on the higher end of what you'll find, but you know we feel like the the features are worth it. Other con, this one does not include an integrated uh, valve. Uh, one of the things you know that we kind of figured out as we were doing our design work, you know, valves just really restrictive. Um, you know, it's kind of inconvenient to have to kind of bend down. You know, let's say your pump is down on the floor, but you want to look over your kettle. Everybody has valves on their kettle. It's just part of what you need for the brewing process. And not only was it a big restriction, it also was kind of inconvenient in a lot of ways to have to you're look looking, your kettle. You're yeah. looking into your kettle, okay, the flow's too much. You bend yeah. down, you adjust it, you look up, okay, now it's too low. And then you yeah. go back down again where it's, you're gonna have it either right on your valve, which if you, you want, you can go that way, but we think like on top of the kettle, is gonna be the best way to adjust it. Yeah, so it just seemed like a redundant feature and we definitely saw a huge decrease in performance in a pump like this 
when you put a lot of restriction, which is really what a valve is. Yeah, and it's, I mean, we saw it on the Riptide, it was definitely something that we considered, but when you take into account, you know, the reduction in performance, you know, we wanted something that flowed more, had higher pressure, and you just can't get that with the integrated valve. Yep, absolutely. So we got a lot to talk about the spike flow when it comes to advantages here. You can see right off the bat, we did incorporated a lot of no-brainer features, um, you know, doing a ground up design like this. Number one, making sure this is available both TC and MPT for any scenario that the brewer's got. Um, you know, quick and easy three inch tri-clamp uh, joint makes disassembly uh, super smooth. Something that's been, yep. you know, kind of adapted from the commercial industry. Yeah. Uh, Riptide has it, it's a great feature. You know, the commercial industry has been doing it for yeah. 50 years. Yep. Um, like you said, no, no brainer design. Yeah. Motor wise, um, you know, again, similar to, um, you know, some of the other uh, motors on the market doing kind of a, a, a totally enclosed motor. It's quiet. Uh, it keeps itself cool. You know, it's kind of a no brainer uh, option for yeah, us. Yeah. Again, you know, similar to even the cheapo options had a totally enclosed motor. Mm -hmm. uh, the Riptide has a very similar motor as ours. Uh, it's aluminum, it has the finning to help dissipate the heat. Uh, it's very quiet. We anodize ours black to help prevent, uh, well one, it looks you know awesome, yep. uh, but also um, gives it just one more layer of protection. You know, when, especially when you're working with star sand, uh, aluminum and star sand don't really get along, so the uh, the black anodized does help uh, yep. with, with that as, a, as well. Yeah, and so that's a lot of kind of peripheral features, but honestly, the majority of engineering, the majority of time, invested in this project really comes into the kind of the design of the pump itself, you know, from the kind of pump head on forward, that's where we really spent our time. You know, we spent a couple of years on this. Um, you, know, you guys spent, what, a better part of a year just on the internal geometry and flow pass of, of the pump head. Yeah, I mean, this was kind of ground up, starting from theoretical, kind of just kind of optimizing the turbine and the, you know, the flow pass, making sure everything flowed really naturally. And that's kind of how we came to really what we consider kind of an industry leading, um, you know, pressure and flow for a pump this size. Uh, We're getting what, 20, 25% more flow and pressure compared to the March Chugger and the Riptide. Yeah. Using the same size 120th horsepower motor. Yep, absolutely. And that's just flow fundamentals and just good pump head design. Uh, you know, making sure that's how, why we chose to do the center inlet, uh, you know, and side outlet, that's just, you know, pump fundamentals. Um, that kind of going back to what we talked about earlier, that's another reason why we chose not to incorporate an integrated valve because we found uh, a lot of losses when, when, yeah. when we played around with that kind of concept. Um, kind of on the flip side of, you know, what the pump can do, it's getting it going, you know, and that just seems to be one of the biggest things in how you get your brew day going. There's always air in the lines. Sometimes the air is ahead of the pump, sometimes the air is behind the pump. We messed around with so many different ways of bleeding the pump because we knew adding a bunch of valves, fittings, T's, and everything, I mean, that's just money, it's space, it's weight, yeah. it's... I mean, our, our trio system has a whole you know, manifold just for bleeding the lines, which we can get rid of now uh, yeah. because it's, it's integrated. So I guess walk us through um, kind of our solution to a pretty common you know, problem. Yeah, and so you know, one of the things we learned, we talked about on the on the, when we talked about the Riptide, when you bleed the system on the outlet side, you've got a lot of pressure, and so that comes out and it's going to spray at you, um, you know, and, and it's also going to be a little bit harder to control. And so one of the things we found, really, this pump is going to be happy when you feed it with a full inlet line, and so we really started to focus on how can we bleed the inlet side so that you've got a nice column of water always feeding right into the pump. Because even if you've got an air bubble ahead, usually if you feed it with solid water, it's just gonna start picking up and going and it's just gonna push right through that air. And so that's why we kind of developed, it's almost think about it like a sample valve on your conical. You know, it's just a real easy to use, couple turns. What we do is we provide, you have uh, the water coming in, it has a really easy way to kind of exit out. So you got a little nice thing. I mean, this was a late addition, but a little mm -hmm. barb fitting. So you can either get a little cup under there, or I mean, you could even have a dedicated hose that runs to a, a floor drain or a bucket yep, or something. Yep, you run it into a five gallon bucket or, or onto a tray, and it's just really clean. And the nice thing about this being on the inlet side, there's no pressure here. It's just gravity. So this kind of comes out like a gentle flow. And so the air kind of comes out with a little bit of water, and right away your hose fills up, and then you can just kind of 
turn this back closed and just the pump's just gonna pick right up and go. So I know the nice thing that, you know, it was awesome that when, when you guys developed this, when you know you can have it running, open it up, and water doesn't come squirting at you. No, it, it, it just comes it gently builds. out. <laughs> you can keep this thing going, um, even with this valve, you know, almost all the way open because again, you can, you know, you're not gonna be developing, pr you know, pressure on that side. You're just gonna be bleeding that air and, out. And in comparison to the Riptide, if you have the pump running and that valve's open, it's, you're getting sprayed with yeah. eight PSI, yep. potentially scalding hot water. Absolutely. So I think that's a, a really smart design. Um, so I think that kind of covers most of the outside. Uh, there's some internal features that we want to show you. So we're going to break this apart and we'll show you some of the, you know, standalone uh, internal features that, that mm -hmm. kind of make the, the spike flow uh, industry leading the pump. So we actually have the uh, NPT spike flow pump head and the NPT Riptide pump head. We've been talking about the loose thr thrust washer and, you know, a couple other different, you know, pros, cons. Walk us through maybe the engineering aspects of, of each. Yeah, so kind of the first thing is, you know, this is a wear item. So, you know, when you turn that pump, you run it for thousands of, of hours, things are gonna wear. And the question is, where does that wear occur? So, you know, if you look at the Riptide here, it's got kind of a pressed in shaft here, and then it has a loose thrust washer. And so this kind of takes some of that wear, and then it also wears into the housing itself. And so you can actually get some wear on this you can lose this. If you run your pump without this, you didn't even realize that you lost it. You can wear that much faster. It can make a lot of noise, kind of chew itself up. Um, so when we kind of went through the way that these pumps were designed, what we'll, would we'll be kind of best foot forward, um, we decided to kind of incorporate all of the wear elements on just one small and inexpensive part. And you can see here what we, we have here is kind of an integrated shaft and thrust surface. And so, you know, we so, can- So this piece, instead of being loose, is built in to this right here. Yep, so it's kind of a, a forward surface and a spinning surface. And so if this ever does wear down after thousands of hours, it's cheap and easy to replace. You're never gonna have to replace this because this doesn't see any of that 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 motion. And, and in contrast, you know, we're looking at this one, I can see that there's galling lines on here. Now we've probably put on a few hundred hours onto this, but this is pressed in. There's no way yeah. to replace it. You now have to replace this entire part, which I don't know what the replacement cost is, but I would guess easily 50 to hundred dollars. You know, this is a $10 part. Right. And like you said, you'll never have to replace this, this pump head ever again. Yeah. And so that was kind of a big decision point for us. And then, you know, really just looking at the way that this housing is designed, you know, again, going back to pump fundamentals, you just want to, you want that water to flow as smoothly as it can. So you kind of have that single inlet coming in and a single inlet going out. It almost doesn't even have to take any turns. When you look at inside the pump geometry on something like this, again, it's a good pump, but you've got to take so many right angle turns. Comes in, yep. goes into the pump head, takes a 90, goes another an 90 outlet, out, and then another, and then 90, another 90, and just like that's just restrictive flow. So again, there's there's kind of a reason why we're able to maximize and be kind of best in class with this kind of pump head, this motor. Um, it's really just flow fundamentals. And then I think the last thing to talk about, you know, internals, we have you know our impeller, mm -hmm. and one of the things that we've incorporated is these these chopping tines. Yep. So this kind of sits inside and helps chop up, you know, hops or you know trube or grain or anything that yep. could potentially get in there and really helps reduce the chance of any clogging. And I know I was just on our Facebook uh, user group and I saw someone had to take apart their pump head right the mid, the brew mid brew day. day. Yep. And it's just, it's a pain in the ass. Yeah, so anytime you have to do that, you're taking it apart, you have to prime again, you've got hot sticky wort getting everywhere, it's making a mess, you're losing, you know, you, you got some losses going on there. So we always wanna try to avoid that. Yeah. Yeah, so I think that pretty much covers the the inside of the and the differences and pros and cons between you know the the spike approach and the Riptide and some of the other uh, pumps that use a loose dust washer. Yep. Thanks for watching. That was our engineering download, Adam. Thanks for kind of walking through the the different pumps and then you know the process that that you guys took for developing ours. We'll have some more videos coming out on our pump. If you got any additional questions, please reach out to our support team. Call, email, chat. Whatever is easiest for you, they'll be happy to answer any questions. If you're watching this before fall of 2022, sign up for the pre-sale. If you're watching it after, head onto the website. Go buy one. Yep.